I can admit that I'm human. I have skin that isn't invincible. Sometimes it leaves a scar that forever reminds you of pain or suffering, but it heals and now you're stronger. Oh my gosh, did I say that analogy for life? And today I'll be sharing some of those injuries I've received. I said stronger earlier, but in my case, I really just mean less stupid because some of these injuries I have make me want to crumble in embarrassment. So gather around, I'm sharing these stories to hopefully give you insight on how not to make the same mistakes. But also, some of these happen because of normal human things, so I guess, pick your battles. I have two everlasting scars that probably won't ever heal, aka the injuries I probably should have gotten stitches for but didn't. I have another scar that is huge but will probably heal over time. And then small scars that are difficult to see but the memory lives on in my goldfish brain. So this first scar is probably my oldest one, and if you were to see and told to find my fingerprint, you will most likely 9 times out of 10 be able to know it's me, because I have a permanent scar going across it. Don't know if it's safe to reveal that on the internet, but I guess it's too late to take it back. I got this scar because I was just trying to be a good sister. People know the struggle with hair. You shed, and when you shower, your hair can clog the strainer that keeps the hair from going down the drain, and obviously you have to empty it out, otherwise it just becomes a puddle of soggy hair soup. So my sister is here taking a shower, and she needed the strainer to be cleaned. The way our bathroom is set up, the trash is on the opposite wall from the tub, so she can't reach. I tried being a good sister and clean it out for her, and because of the way I was holding the strainer and the pressure I was using to scoop the hair out, the strainer slipped out of my grip, cutting my fingers in the process. I yelled ouch as a second nature and immediately put pressure on the area. At the time, I didn't know I was bleeding. I thought it was going to be a paper cut type situation where the skin was broken, but it didn't draw blood. So I'm putting pressure on the cut, and the second I lifted up said pressure, Niagara Falls. Blood everywhere. I don't remember what happened much with my sister after that, but I remember calling to my dad saying I was bleeding and then he rushed to the bathroom and saw my blood all over the sink. We washed it off and put pressure on it for so long. I'm sure I was bleeding in that waterfall for like 5 minutes straight and when it seemed like the coast was clear, my dad put a bandaid over my cut. And I swear not even a full minute passed when I saw me bleeding through the darn bandaid. At that point, I'm in panic mode. Adrenaline was pumping so I don't remember it being painful, I just kept thinking that I had to go get stitches. And I don't like hospitals or clinics, so I can't think straight. So we repeated the process of trying to stop the bleeding. This time, my dad put two layers of bandages hoping it wouldn't bleed through, which thank goodness it didn't. But it definitely bled through that first layer again. And now thanks to that, I have a scar covering about a third of my thumb's surface. And that cut did not heal for so long. I was so scared of washing my hands because it felt like I was just going to reopen the wound. But I've been concerned about drains like that ever since. It was so bad my parents replaced all the bath drains with those bath mushroom thingies made out of rubber. You know, after talking about it out loud, I realized a lot of my injuries are from a blade-like material. I mentioned before I was part of the marching band Color Guard, and not only do we spin flags, but we also spin rifles and sabers, which are these sword-looking equipment. And this was during Winter Guard season. The difference is that Winter Guard is just the guard without the band, and we're indoors instead of a football field, and it usually takes place in winter, hence the name. Well, I was spinning the saber, and the way my school was is that we usually write the show as we practice, rather than having the entire show planned out in the beginning. And this one part, I needed a move to take up a couple counts to get to the next ensemble part. The year prior, I did a parallel toss with the saber where it spins parallel to the ground instead of spinning frontwards towards the audience. Can you guess where this is going? I thought I could do it again because I did that toss all throughout the season last year, but I was just having a bad toss day and I threw the parallel and BAM! Sliced me right in the face. Again, I did not know I was bleeding. I just thought, ow, that really hurt my face. And I was wearing guard gloves which protect your hands when you have to constantly catch weapons. I saw blood on my glove and wondered why. Like a dummy, I touched it again and it stung so bad. And lo and behold, tons of blood on my glove. I feel sorry for all the cells in my body having to deal with the fact I touched an open wound with my dirty used color guard glove. 
You guys worked so hard. Crediting this meme that I saw ages ago because it's so good. And this one was pretty deep as well. I remember my mouth bleeding and stinging while brushing my teeth that night because the cut went all the way through my lip. I kid you not, the initial cut was huge. Like the cut went from my outer lip near the edge of my cheek. But as it healed, it just left a very faint scar on my upper lip that hasn't healed since. The next scar that is huge but will probably eventually heal over time happened recently and I'm embarrassed to admit that I got it while shaving my legs. Yes, I do have legs. I was shaving my legs when the razor slipped and slice, again, a cut that was at least two inches. Like I couldn't even dress this cup because I didn't own a bandage that big. The biggest one I owned was one of those big square band-aids, but that wasn't big enough because my cut would still be where the adhesive was rather than the cotton part and I didn't think it was serious enough for gauze so I ended up just using pressure and a paper towel while it scabbed up. Alright, the last scar I'll talk about and honestly doesn't look like a scar. It looks more like a birthmark but I guarantee you it's a scar from a very unfortunate accident. So this happened at one of those home playgrounds that you buy from a hardware store and build it yourself. It was my friend's birthday. I'll call her Belle and me and a couple friends were running on this playground and kids can be a little rowdy sometimes. We don't really know the limits of our bodies till we hurt ourselves. Well, I wanted to swing on this rope, but I can't really remember if it was an actual rope or if it was attached to a swing, but either or, I was still swinging on that thing. And as I was about to jump off, I was pushed off, not by Belle. I don't really know who did it, but it wasn't on purpose. I don't think. It was an instance where they weren't seeing where they were going and I just happened to be there. So when that happened, I more so fell off the ledge trying to grab the rope and I didn't grip it enough so I weirdly flipped and ended up in the bark. And somewhere along the way, I got a huge cut on my upper forearm. I don't know if it was from the rope or from landing on the bark, but I was bleeding. Belle ran to her mom and she immediately called my parents and I had to go home sad times. At first, I didn't like my scars. I would try to cover up my lip one with makeup and I hated talking about them when people asked me. But as I grew older, there are so many other things to worry about than scars. And besides, having some badass scars makes you a more likable character in the series. Am I right? Mm -hmm.